Hello. This video will introduce the second of the three dimensions of practice from the UKPSF, titled Core Knowledge. During this video, I will go through each of the core knowledge descriptors and give you some examples around what aspects of your practice might be relevant for addressing each descriptor. If you would like some general introductory information regarding the UKPSF, please watch the video titled Introduction to the UKPSF before continuing. The core knowledge dimension of practice is a set of six descriptors which aim to outline the varied types of knowledge relevant in performing teaching and learning activities. When writing your fellowship application, you will not need to write separate commentaries for each core knowledge descriptor. Separate commentaries are only needed for the areas of activity UKPSF dimension of practice. Instead, core knowledge descriptors are meant to be embedded in your writing and integrated in your practice across your application. So, for example, when you're talking about a particular teaching activity so as to address a particular area of activity in your application, you are meant to include whichever descriptors of core knowledge are relevant in demonstrating your educational rationale for running the teaching activity in the way that you have. The first core knowledge descriptor is titled Subject Material. This refers to you evidencing that you have subject, discipline or practice mastery and therefore are qualified for participating in teaching and learning activities as specified in your role. As your fellowship application requires you to start off by providing a short personal statement or biography, simply by mentioning what your educational or professional background is, you're essentially addressing this descriptor. Remember, as long as you accurately address each of the core knowledge descriptors at least once across your application, you will meet the review requirements. The second descriptor asks you to demonstrate that you use appropriate methods for teaching, learning and assessing in your subject area and at the level of the academic program. How does who your students are, what year of study or level they are at and what discipline they are studying inform the way that you teach or support them in their learning? For example, if you're a postdoc teaching in labs, would you adopt the same approach when addressing first year undergraduates as that for final year project students? Think about how you would change and adapt the way and approach of teaching depending on who your audience is. This descriptor asks you to consider what technology tools you might use in teaching and learning activities. There is no expectation that you're using cutting edge technologies or anything outside of regular teaching and learning tools. For this descriptor, you will need to demonstrate how and why you use the technologies that you do, both traditional and new, to support learning. Keep in mind that the evidence you provide will most likely link to other areas of core knowledge. For example, how and why technology is used within a specific discipline, professional or vocational areas for specific groups of students in specific learning contexts or environments. The next descriptor asks you to consider the methods you use to evaluate the effectiveness or impact of the teaching or supporting learning activities you're involved with. Here, you should focus on the methods you prefer to use, regardless if these are formal or informal, in order to gain feedback about the impact of teaching. You should also discuss how you then utilize this feedback in the continuous development of your work and how this helps you enhance your educational practice. The last descriptor gets you to think about how you use student feedback to enhance your practice and their experience. This descriptor has quite a bit of overlap with the previous one, which asks you to consider the methodology of gaining feedback of effectiveness by allowing you to build on this process further and consider the bigger picture in terms of quality assuring your educational activities. You don't have to only rely on institutional quality assurance processes, but instead you can expand on this by considering how as an individual or as part of a teaching or professional team, you ensure that your educational practice develops continuously. As you might have noticed, you can easily provide evidence of your core knowledge in your commentary on the areas of activity. For example, designing and planning a learning activity, which relates to activity, area of activity one from the UKPSF, effectively requires the use of appropriate teaching and learning methods, which is core knowledge two, an understanding of how the particular student group learns, core knowledge three, and the use of appropriate learning technologies, which is core knowledge four. So linking the core knowledge to areas of activity provides greater coherence and depth to the evidence and more accurately reflects the reality of practice. The next step for you now would be to watch the remaining UKPSF videos in this series.